अब बच्चे खुश और मम्मी भी कारवा मिनी किड्स द आर्चर एंड द लाइन देर वॉज अ फॉरेस्ट विद एनिमल्स वन डे अ वेरी गुड आर्चर रीच द फॉरेस्ट ऑल द एनिमल्स रैन अवे अपॉन सींग हिम हवेवर द किंग ऑफ द जंगल द लाइन स्टेड बैक द लाइन चैलेंज द आर्चर टू फाइट विद हिम द आर्चर रिमूव हिज एरो एंड aimed at the lion you should now see what my messenger has to tell you before shooting at the lion the lion was hit by the arrow and he started running in the opposite direction a fox had seen all this from a distance he went to the ailing lion the fox asked the lion why was he running you should fight back with the archer advised the fox The lion replied, "It is not smart to stay close to such neighbors. Ah, the man's messenger caused me such a wound. Imagine ah, how dangerous he himself is. One should never stay near such people who can attack you so easily." <sighs> <sighs> Moral: One should be careful about their enemy's strengths a matter of devotion tansin was a minister in akbar's court he was one of the famous nine jewels in akbar's kingdom like birbal tansin was famous for his singing in the entire kingdom akbar praised tansin highly for his talent in music one day when tansin was singing Akbar told him that no one could ever sing better than him. He said, "You are the best in the world, Tansen." Birbal also added, saying he had never heard anyone sing like him. Tansen was very pleased and thanked the emperor, but he said there are other people who could sing better than him. Tansen told Akbar that he should listen to his master. Guru Swami Hari Das Singh Tansen claimed that his master sang much better than him Akbar agreed and was very eager to hear the guru's melodious voice As suggested by Tansen Akbar along with Birbal and Tansen went to Hari Das's home to hear him sing They stayed there for a few days but Hari Das had not sung yet Akbar was losing his patience. He asked Tansen, "When will your master sing?" "He will sing when he feels it's time. Please wait for some more time, my lord," replied Tansen. One day, Akbar woke up suddenly to the sound of a beautiful voice. It was Guru Hari Das singing. The emperor was awestruck by the guru's deep voice. Swami ji is extremely talented. His singing is definitely better than you, Tansen. He exclaimed. Satisfied, Akbar returned to his palace with Birbal. On the way back, Akbar said, "Why doesn't Tansen sing as well as his master?" Birbal replied, "My lord, the secret here is devotion." Tansen sings for you while his guru sings for the lord himself Akbar got his reply and smiled Bakasur Krishna and Balaram along with their friends took their cattle out for grazing They all decided to play nearby in the meantime They played like oxen or made funny animal sounds They even played the flute and danced merrily While they were busy playing Bakasur a demon entered the herd in the shape of a calf He had come to kill Krishna and Balaram Krishna noticed him and informed Balaram too They made a plan to kill Bakasur Krishna quietly went behind Bakasur and held him up by his legs and tail Then Krishna lifted him up 
and twirled him in the sky. Bakasur was then thrown against a tree. The tree fell due to the hit and Bakasur died. All their cowherd friends were stunned looking at his feet. They now knew that nothing could go wrong till the time Krishna was around. After a few days, they all had gone to a river bank to feed their cows water. There, the boy saw a huge monster. He was the same demon Bakasur in the shape of a crane. He also had a big beak. The crane pounced on Lord Krishna and took him in its beak. The gopis who saw this were very scared and even fainted. But Krishna used his paws and became very hot in the crane's mouth. The crane had to spit him out to save its beak. The crane tried once again to eat him up. But this time, Krishna stood between its beak and held them apart. He then tore the beak apart like sugar cane. Bakaso died instantly. The gods and all the children were happy and relieved. The gods even showered flowers from the sky. Birbal's Journey to Heaven Not all ministers at Akbar's court were pleased with Birbal joining the court. They were jealous of him and decided to take revenge. The ministers thought of taking the barber's help for this. They offered the barber a bag full of gold coins if he helped them. Since the barber was poor, he agreed. When Akbar was getting a haircut from the barber, he said, My lord, I saw your father in my dream last night. He seemed to be doing well in heaven, but it was getting boring for him. He wants you to send Birbal up there to him for entertainment. He likes Birbal because he is intelligent and funny. Akbar grew concerned for his father and met Birbal. He told him, My father is asking for you to be sent to heaven to him. I like you, but I am worried about my father. Birbal was in disbelief. Birbal soon found out the entire truth behind this evil plan. He then got an idea and dug up a grave for himself outside his home. Birbal also made a hidden tunnel from the grave to his house. After this, he went to the emperor and said, Jahapana, I am ready, but you will have to bury me alive in the grave outside my house. Akbar agreed. Birbal was then taken to the grave and buried alive. He soon escaped through the tunnel and hid in his home. He stayed there for a few weeks. After a few weeks, Birbal went to the royal court. The whole court, including Akbar, could not believe their eyes. Akbar asked Birbal about his father, how he was, and why was Birbal looking so shabby. Birbal replied, Dear King, your father is doing very well. He is happy for you. Birbal also said the reason he was looking so shabby was because there were no barbers up in heaven. He requested Akbar to send his own royal barber to heaven to make his father happier. Akbar quickly asked his guards to bury the barber alive. The barber realized his mistake and started pleading to Akbar not to bury him. He got scared and blurted out the names of the jealous ministers who made him do this. 
all the ministers were removed from the kingdom and the barber was punished. Birbal was rewarded and carried on his work in the court. Moral What goes around comes around or Moral Never wish bad for someone who is good. Hanuman with Child Ram Hanuman's parents had sent him to the sun god to get more education. The sun was pleased to have a brilliant student like Hanuman. He taught Hanuman all the Shastras and Vedas in a few days itself. It was then time for Hanuman to pay the sun god for his teachings. Hanuman prostrated before the sun god and asked him what could he offer him. I do not want any offerings, Hanuman, but I want you to promise me that you will always take care of my creation, Sugriva, at all times. The sun god told Hanuman. Hanuman immediately agreed and took it as an order to look after Sugriva. Thus, Hanuman and Sugriva went on to becoming good friends. In the meantime, Lord Ram had taken birth in Ayodhya. Shiva would often find excuses to go to Ayodhya and see Lord Ram. Lord Shiva sometimes went to the palace as a saint begging for alms or as a palmist to read the palm of Lord Rama. He loved to feel the small lotus-like palms of Lord Ram. Once, Lord Shiva took the form of a juggler and a monkey. He went to the palace entrance and started playing his damaru. The monkey began dancing and saluting everyone to the sound of the damaru. Seeing this, Lord Rama started enjoying the show and was laughing. Lord Shiva was extremely happy seeing Ram laugh. He started playing the damaru more aggressively making the monkey dance happily. Lord Rama soon asked for the monkey to be given to him permanently. Thus, Hanuman came in the company of Lord Ram in the form of the monkey. Lord Rama and Hanuman grew up to become close allies and friends. One day, Maharishi Vishwamitra came to Ram. Ram spoke to him and had to leave. Before leaving, Ram took Hanuman in isolation and spoke to him. Hanuman, you are a close confidant of mine. It is now my time to go and fulfill my life's purpose of saving the world from evil King Ravana. He has made the lives of all sages and gods worse. I need to kill him and save the world from his fury. You will also be playing a key role in this in the future. Now I have to go. I will meet you after dealing with Subahu, Marich, Taraka, Trishira, Khardushan and Shurpanakha. You will then be meeting me and introducing me to Sugriva and his monkeys. They will be helping me too, said Lord Rama before leaving. Hanuman was sad at having to be separated from his master but he knew the reason why and obeyed. He prostrated before Lord Rama and then left. Most Foolish Person Akbar's favorite hobby was to collect good horses. He also liked other things like playing chess, flying kites, etc. But he loved collecting horses. A horse dealer once visited his kingdom. He had brought with him a few well-bred horses to sell. Akbar examined the horses closely and said that he wanted to buy all of them. Akbar also asked if the seller had any more horses to sell. The seller said he could go to Afghanistan and buy more horses for Akbar. He asked Akbar for some more money to go there. Akbar agreed and paid the seller for his horses. In addition, Akbar also gave him more gold coins to go to Afghanistan. 
Akbar did not ask the horse seller about his whereabouts before giving the extra money. The seller took the money and left. A few days passed and there was still no sign of the horse seller. Akbar was getting worried now. One day, Akbar asked Birbal to list down the names of the 10 biggest fools in the country. Birbal did that quickly and gave the list to the emperor. Akbar got very furious when he read the list. Why is my name the first one on this list, Birbal? shouted Akbar. Birbal replied quickly, My lord, because it is true. Now there was no controlling of Akbar's spite. He was very hurt by Birbal's words. Jahapana, you gave the horse seller 200 gold coins without even asking him anything. You do not know who he is or where he stays. He is a stranger for us, added Birbal. Akbar said that the man will come back with his horses. Birbal replied, Jahapana, if the man comes back, then I will replace his name with yours from the list. Akbar understood that he had indeed been fooled by the seller. Moral Never trust a stranger without checking facts. Birbal's Cooking of Khichdi The city of Fatehpur Sikri used to get very cold during winters. Akbar decided to declare a prize of 1,000 gold coins for anyone who could spend a night in the cold lake in the city. For a few days, no one came forward to take the challenge. It was risky to stand in the ice-cold lake at night. One day, a very old Brahmin came to the court and said that he would take the challenge. He was very thin and poor. Akbar was worried if he would survive the cold. But the Brahmin reassured Akbar and said that he needed the coins for his family's survival. Akbar agreed. The Brahmin was taken to the lake where he took off his clothes and went inside. The Brahmin was standing in the middle of the ice-cold water. He was being watched by royal guards the entire night. The Brahmin survived this cold night and came to the palace for his prize the next day. Akbar was impressed by his feat. He asked the Brahmin how he survived the cold waters at night. The Brahmin replied, Jahapana, it was indeed cold. But what kept me warm were the palace lambs that I could see from the lake. Their sight gave me the warmth to survive. Hearing this, Akbar got angry. He punished the Brahmin by throwing him out. He called the Brahmin a cheater for getting warmth from the palace lambs. The Brahmin was sent away without any reward. Everyone knew the emperor had made an unfair decision. But no one could do anything about it. Birbal was determined to act on this so he quickly thought of an idea. He invited Akbar along with his minister for dinner at his house that night. Akbar agreed. They all happily reached Birbal's home for dinner. At that time, Birbal was sitting in his garden. There was a tree with a pot hanging on it. Under the pot was a small bonfire on the ground. The pot was hanging high on the tree instead of being on the fire. They went and asked, What are you doing here, Birbal? Birbal replied, My lord, I am cooking khichdi for you all. At this, Akbar laughed and called him a fool. It is not possible for the heat to reach the pot which is so high, said Akbar. Birbal nodded his head and said, My lord, I know that. But heat will reach the pot same way as the heat from your lamps reached the Brahmin last night. The emperor immediately realized his mistake and summoned for the Brahmin the next day. 
the brahmin was rewarded with 1000 gold coins and appreciated for his feat akbar looked at birbal and smiled in acknowledgement dirty minty in a fish tank a fish named minty was being sent from the shop to her new home the new fish tank was in a restaurant it already had seven more fish they were all happy on seeing minty and became friends minty had a bad habit of eating a lot she used to eat all the food that came her way she even ate insects that fell in the tank or crumbs that kids threw in due to this minty dirtied the tank a lot all the seven fish used to tell her to not eat so much but minty never listened to them she continued overeating and dirtying the tank soon the fish in the tank started falling ill after a few days when the cleaner came to clean the tank all the eight fish including minty had died moral your actions affect you and everyone else around you as well dishonest judge akbar had a big panel of judges in his kingdom these judges helped people in need a woman went to one of the judges with a bag full of gold coins she asked the judge to keep the bag with him since she was going for pilgrimage she told him these coins are all that i have left with me as savings please keep the bag safe i will take it when i come back the judge happily obliged the woman returned after one month to take the bag from him upon opening the bag she realized that the gold coins were missing the bag now had stones inside it she was furious she went back to the judge's house and started shouting at him the judge denied it and said you are a liar you just want me to pay you you must have kept stones in the bag not gold and not coins the woman was very sad and thought of seeking emperor akbar's help king akbar listened to her but needed a witness before taking a decision he called birbal for solving the issue birbal gave this a thought he asked akbar to tear his bed sheet before going to bed tonight birbal said i will have the answer to the case tomorrow the next morning akbar saw that his torn bed sheet looked as good as new he informed birbal of the same birbal then went and brought a very old tailor to the royal court the tailor said that the judge had come to him earlier with a bag full of stones he said the judge asked me to stitch the bag and make it as new the tailor recognized the woman's bag everyone realized the truth immediately the judge was called and punished with lashes on his back akbar also asked the judge to pay the woman back but akbar was confused as to how did birbal solve this mystery birbal said emperor when you tore your bed sheet i knew the maid would get it stitched as new so she went to this tailor in our kingdom i came to know he is the best tailor for this job in our kingdom i quickly understood that the judge must have approached him to stitch the bag akbar rewarded birbal for his intelligence and acknowledged him moral honesty is the best policy bakasur krishna and balaram along with their friends took their cattle out for grazing they all decided to play